become a firefighter? Well, it uh, takes a lot of work. You have to uh, become an EMT first, get your CPR card, become an EMT, and that's the bare minimum that you need. And for education, you need to at least be a high school graduate or have a GED. Um, anything more is always better for promotions, but you need, those are the minimum qualifications. And then you have to apply and you take written tests, oral interviews, and once you pass all that with the department, they send you to a, ours is a 16 week fire academy. And it's probably the hardest 16 weeks of your life. And you graduate there and then you become a probationary firefighter. And you're a probationary firefighter for a year. And if you pass that, then you're a full-fledged firefighter. How long does that take normally? Uh, it ranges from, it's different for everybody. It took me about six years to finally get hired. Um, applying to different apartments, being a volunteer firefighter out in East County, being a paramedic on the ambulance, and uh, eventually I got hired here. What kind of challenges do you have to face? Um, we work in a very dynamic uh, work environment where not every call is the same. And you're basically solving problems for people, whether it be uh, they're having some sort of medical emergency, uh, you're gonna try to solve that problem and take them to the hospital. Or if they're in a traffic accident, you know, get them out of their vehicle, help them, or in a in a fire, get the fire out, rescue people out of the buildings. Can girls do it? Of course, we have uh, lots of women firefighters. Uh, we have a bunch on our job too. Um, they put on a, a female uh, fire academy for uh, girls up to about 18 years of age, and they also have a pre. Uh, fire academy that they do for uh, females that are 18 years or older and if they pass that then they get to go uh, it's to help prepare them for a regular fire academy. What kind of problems do you have when people call you? Um, a majority of our calls are medical aid so they're medical emergencies and again that is a wide range of everything. Uh, heart problems, everything. We have paramedics on all of our rigs and we have ALS equipment on all of our rigs where we can help in any life-threatening emergency. Why did you want to be a firefighter? Um, I wanted to be a firefighter to help people, help my, be involved in my community and help the people in my community. I'm born and raised in San Diego. I've spent my entire life here. So it's been an honor to serve the citizens of San Diego City. What do you love about being a firefighter? Um, I love the, you know, never knowing what you're going to get when you uh, get a call stepping off the rig and seeing what that is and fixing that problem. What is the hardest part about being a firefighter? Um, I'd say the hardest part is probably the amount of time that we spend away from our own families. It's probably the hardest part. We're gone anywhere from one 24 hours to 96 hours to two weeks, we can be gone. So that time apart from the family is always pretty hard. Is there anything else people should know about being a firefighter? I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, that one's a good one. I, uh, I don't have an answer for that one. <laughs> you stumped me. <laughs> That's all the questions. Firefighter Lane is going to show us some equipment. All right, so this is a, a water tender. So this holds 3,000 gallons of water. And this is primarily used for uh, wildland firefighting. Uh, this is bigger than most of the county water tenders that we have um, in the city. All our water tenders are 3,000 gallons. Um, and then over here we have uh, our ladder truck, truck 28. And uh, this is basically a giant mobile toolbox. That ladder has a capable reach of 105 feet in the air. That's about equivalent of 10 stories, give or take. Um, and we have all kinds of equipment and tools in those cabinets in there that you use to cut people out of cars, uh, rescue people out of all different types of situations. Uh, we have different types of ropes uh, to make uh, systems like to go over the side of cliffs and pull people off of cliffs and everything like that. And then uh, we have engine 28 right here. Uh, this is 
primarily used for fighting fires. Uh, it holds 500 gallons of water. It has a 1500 GPM pump. It's 1500 gallons per minute. Uh, and this is everything that you need to fight fires going inside of houses, buildings, wildland fires around here. This thing has everything on it to do it. And uh, it's pretty much, we're called a double house because we have an engine and a truck company here. Uh, most fire stations around here are single houses, which usually only have a fire engine. So every day we always have eight people on duty here um, and we staff all these rigs. Is there any other equipment? Sure, we can go through this one right here. So here we have fire extinguishers, a chainsaw. What do you use the chainsaw for? Uh, the chainsaw is, uh, it can be used for a number of things. We can use it to cut brush down for wildland fires. Um, they're primarily used on a city department to cut holes in roofs to let the, all the heat out of the, inside the building. Uh, but that task is usually uh, tasked to a truck company. But if you're short on trucks and you need it done, all our fire pumps have chainsaws on it as well. Here we have some very basic uh, rescue equipment. Um, this is a very light duty uh, piece of hydraulic tool that you can use to open and cut uh, cars apart and stuff. Um, these are our BAs, They're, it's called a breathing apparatus. It's, the cylinder's pressurized at 4,500 PSI and they are rated at 45 minutes of breathable air. But that is, they give you that rating at like if you're sitting on the couch watching TV at that kind of breathing rate. So when you're working hard inside a building, they do not last 45 minutes. Can we see inside the truck? Sure, come on over here. This is where the firefighter sits, right here. And we keep all our gear in here. We have radios, we have all kinds of stuff in there. And then if you come over here, the person that sits here drives. This is called the engineer. He is in charge of driving this, the maintenance, uh, pumping all the water to us, to us firefighters. And then uh, right on over here, this is where the captain sits. And he's in charge of the entire crew. Oh, well, they're getting a call right now. So we gotta let them go. They're going to a call. So right now there's a vegetation fire that is just started out in Verona by Verona Casino. So they needed a water tender like we were talking about earlier for that large amount of water that it carries so it can supply the fire engines with water to fight the fire. So that's where that's headed right now. Yeah! Right, that's here. fun. The tire is bigger than you. It is bigger than you. It probably weighs three times as much as you do. All right. Let's see. You want to turn the lights on? You want to turn the rig on? It's hard. You gonna drive this one day? Probably not. No? What do you want to do when you grow up? Newscaster. Oh, really? I never would have guessed. <laughs> Do you have a YouTube channel? Yeah, that's What is it? It's Sky Girl Reporter. Wow, I'll have to check it out. Can you subscribe? You bet. Uh, firefighter Dagger answer all your questions you had for him? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, who's been your favorite so far? The police, the firefighters, or lifeguards? I don't know yet. Still deciding? The firefighters probably. <laughs> We have the coolest cars to drive. Yeah, I could say that. Yeah. It's the biggest too. It's definitely the biggest. That's Engineer Slaughter. He drives. He drives this thing. Sometimes do you get confused which buttons to push? Sometimes there's a lot going on, yeah, but luckily we train a lot. Like today when you were here talking to Firefighter Dagger, his partner and I were out doing training, so 
order to not get confused when there's an emergency, we do lots of training. So hopefully we're ready to go when, when the time comes and we don't get confused. What's your favorite part about driving? Favorite? It's making all the noise. I get to honk the horn, turn the sirens on full blast. That's the best part about driving. I probably would like the siren. Yeah. No. They're so loud. When I was your age, all I wanted to do was drive a fire engine. This station here, we get maybe, we have two rigs. So we get somewhere between six to 12 calls a day. Um, we have some stations where they get one call a day and some stations where they get 25 calls a day. This one's kind of right in the middle. Is this the biggest fire station here? Nope, so we have one downtown. Um, like where all the tall buildings are downtown San Diego. And that one has lots of and probably one, two, like seven different fire engines there. And they all do different things. They have one for bombs, they have one for the investigator. So if there's a fire, they come out and try to figure out what happened. There's a fire truck like this, there's a fire. That one they call the big house. That's their nickname. Do you know how big this is? How big? There's a little yellow sticker right by you and it tells you how tall it is. It tells you how much it weighs. Uh, 71,800 pounds, 40 foot, six inches, 11 foot, eight and a half inches tall. That's Just sitting like this. Weighs like as much as 35.9 tons. Oh, it's like I, 40 elephants. I guess my dad couldn't carry that because he can't even carry me anymore. <laughs> so I'm gonna say thank you to everybody and I've learned a lot about the fire station and how to do stuff and how firefighters help people and I just want to say thank you. Well, thank you for visiting. You're welcome. Come back.